Well, we're with the JDR, J-Star Motors, KTM representative, and of course, Australian young sensation, Ty Simmons. Ty, welcome to MXTV, mate, over in the States. Thanks, Bally. Yeah, uh, finally made it here, just, um, you know, hanging out. Tell us about your pretty special deal you've got going over here. It's a two-year deal. I've signed for two years with the JDR, J-Star, KTM racing teams. For me, it's awesome, it's what I need, um, just to get over here, get settled the first year, you know, second year I want to you know, go for it. But we'll just see what happens, just, you know, give it 110% every week, week in, week out, and, you know, just see where we go and see how it goes. Mate, I remember seeing you out in the pits just only five years ago down here when you were out here as a little fella with your old man. Now you're back with your old man racing. What a dream it's been for you, mate. I know that you really wanted to get out here and do this. How did the dream come about? We well, with KDM in Australia, and, you know, obviously they swapped over and we're kind of arming and arming what to do, and you know they promised us if we rode with them, you know they'd come here the following year. So, you know that was my dream. That's what I wanted to do, and that's what's happened. I cannot thank the JDR guys enough, Jay and Derek, for everything they've done for me. But uh, you know also having Dad here to do this first couple of rounds and uh, racing, it's an awesome experience. It's come a long way. Two years ago when they first started out, you know, there was a lot of questions and, and doubts and if, buts and maybes, but everything they've done has been a step forward. We've come here to America and, you know, straight day one, there wasn't a hiccup. You know, we just rolled on in like we've been here for years. Jay and Derek and Trish have just done a fantastic job. In Australia, some of the supercrosses, I struggle to sleep the night before, and I'm, I never ever struggle with sleeping. I'm, they call me the koala bear, I sleep that much. <laughs> you know, coming into to A1, I thought, man, you know, this is going to be so hard, I won't be able to sleep at all. But, you know, it's only an hour up the road to my house, so I slept in my own bed and was, you know, comfortable. The day before, that night, slept perfect, come here, and just felt like I was going to a practice day back home. I guess I had no pressure. I just, you know, wanted to get out there ride and just see what it was like. You know, once I got on the bike and rolled in and done practice and sort of seen all the seats and how big the stadium was, it was pretty cool. Obviously the first few races have been quite tough. Yeah, it has been definitely very tough for me. Um, also, you know, mentally frustrating. You go and you do everything during the week and then you know, come in and you don't make the main as one of the one of the things that you never ever want to go through, but you know, unfortunately it's happened. I thought our world was coming to an end, you know, and then we went back that week and trained harder and, you know, worked harder. We we rock up again the next week again, the same deal, didn't qualify. It's one of those things over here, really the heats are harder than the buddy final. It's just quite amazing how, how many good riders and the depth of talent that's here. What is it that you think you need to do to step it up and get it up there? My stars have been killing me, so, you no, know, we need to get them to hold and then, um, you know, do a solid eight laps in the heat, get to the main and then, Punch 20 out, that's just the goal, week in, week out, but you know, definitely starts will help and just keeping that intensity there the whole time. I'll tell you what, you and your old man must have had some great conversations, you know, before here and now that you're here. What's some of the things that we've talked about over the dinner table? Oh, you know, it's just just those long drives, you know, what we call the 20 hour weekends, you know, drive to a race as a junior, 10 hours there, 10 hours back. One year we done 48 race meetings, so just to, you know, you add up all the hours and then you think, you, you wonder if it's ever worth it, but now that we're here, you know, it definitely is. You know, we'd always talk how to get faster and when we come over here, what we want to do and what we want to accomplish. You know, we've been talking recently, this isn't, you know, my only goal after racing, I've got big plans. This is just my job to come out and race, but I'm still loving it and having fun. And then, you know, also after it's all done, we've got huge plans together, so I'm really, really looking forward to that, but we'll focus on this first. Is there anything that you can say, wow, this thing has freaked me out over here and you're only a boy from the country as well, mate. What is it that America has really opened your eyes to? One thing that has is that number seven guy. That's one thing that has opened my eyes. You know, watching him ride in practice and stuff like that, it's unreal. He'll go out, circle two laps, and then, you know, everyone's putting in hard laps. He's just cruising around and all of a sudden, lays down one fast lap and it every time goes to the top of the board. No, in saying that, just America itself, it, it's completely different to Australia, completely different to where I'm from. You know, I'm in a town of 300 and we don't even have a traffic light. We've got one roundabout in the spot and no one uses it. We get pulled up at a giveaway sign, you know, that we get pulled up by two cars in front of us, we're on the horn and over it here, you got to wait, you know, half hour in traffic, so. One of your major sponsors, J-Star Motors, they've been hooking you up with some good rigs a Yeah, lot. they have. You know, I got a van and that actually, one of his dream cars, I have to cross the 300, so he's already got one of them. Also, you know, I've moved in a house by myself and just getting everything sorted, you know, I spent the first five weeks here without Dad and normally he's been there for everything, so to do that by myself, you know, you don't really realise what goes into a house and what has to be done, so, yeah, that, that definitely opened my eyes. 
But is it everything that you thought it would be? It's that and more, you know, um, it's, it's been an awesome experience. I cannot thank the team enough, all the people around me, my dad, it was awesome. There's not much more I could say, it, it's been a really, really good experience. You know, the racing's definitely difficult. I've got to pick, you know, a better year to come over and, and step into the big boys class, but I'm only going to get better riding with those guys week in, week out. What about the parties, mate? It's LA. There must be some huge parties you're being out to. No, I've uh, I done that before I come over here. I caught up on all the party scenes, so... Um, <laughs> I've been pretty good, so I'm happy with you know the routine that's going on. You know, in the mornings, get up, go ride, come back, train, and by that time you're tired. But uh, you know, we'll, we'll leave that to Australia when I go home at the end of the year when I get time off. For the father and son out there that are thinking, mate, I want to give my kid a go at this. What what advice have we got for him? Oh, mate, well, uh, it's not the end of the world if you you know. If, uh, there's a lot of people at home that you've got some fast kids, and the money side of it it makes it a lot harder. You know? If you've got the opportunity to get your kids over here to race while they're amateurs, I think it's a good opportunity, you know. But if you can't, it's not the end of the world, you know. That you, you'll still, as you turn senior, you could still get over here and make it. But I definitely do believe the experience that they gain from coming over here as kids, um, you know, helps you later on in life. Is there one thing that you could pick that you could say to this is what you need to practice for because? You know, in Australia, we don't have a lot of supercross tracks to practice on. What would you say to the guys that are coming in and want to be prepared? You know, just to have fun fun with it all, you know. You're not having fun, don't do it. You know, you ain't, you're not going to go anywhere. You make it a lot harder on yourself, your parents or whoever's, you know, backing you. And also, get some good group of guys around you to ride with. You know, in Burke, I had the best tracks in the world, you know, better than here. Dad prepped them every day, they were perfect, but... I had, you know, a nine-year-old cousin to ride with. That was it. He was on a yeah. 65. So, you know, within the last three years, that's been my biggest problem. I haven't, haven't had anyone to ride with. I mean, even if it is a crappy track, you get five or six guys out there riding, you'll go ahead and leaps and bounds. You know, over here, it's a lot better every day. You know, we're riding with Roxon Shorty, Dan Reed, and Doggy Mail on PJ. So, uh, it's so much better. Thanks for joining us, mate. No Thanks, worries. fantastic. Thanks, buddy. Out of all. And uh, look forward to uh, reading more about you as the year goes on. Thank you very much.